Hi, everybody. I'm Martin Hyatt, and I'm uh, here today to talk to Trevor Haley, this year's fiction judge for the Saints and Sinners um, short fiction contest. Um, I was a judge a couple of years ago, and I thought it'd be great um, to talk to Trevor about short fiction, um, uh, what it means to write short fiction, how to approach it, um, and just get his insights as this year's judge in terms of uh, his thoughts and his overall views on uh, the craft of short fiction. Uh, so, Trevor, it's great to see you. Uh, it's been a while. We've known each other for probably 15 or 20 years at this yeah, point. Yeah, many so. years. We met at Saints and Sinners, in fact. Yeah, we did. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we both had a book. We were label mates, yeah. right? We both had books out with the same publisher yeah. uh, at that yeah. time. Yeah, uh, good days. So, um, yeah, I thought um, today as we talk about um, uh, short fiction, a couple of little reminders. I just wanted to remind everybody about Give Out Day, um, which is uh, June 28th. Um, of course, um, it's it's during Pride Month, but you can give throughout the year. And also, I wanted to um, just say happy Pride and um, to remind everybody of the deadline for this year's short fiction contest, uh, which is October 1st. Uh, again, this year, uh, Trevor is the judge. And... I wanted to perhaps start by just talking about some of the uh, joys and sort of freedoms um, uh, associated with writing short fiction, and then we can talk about the challenges and the difficulty. So um, I know for myself, when it comes to short fiction, um, even though it's, uh, it seem, it seemingly, um, there, it, it would seem that there's less room to work, um, and you know, a novel seems to give you more space, um, for me, I always find there are a lot, there's a lot more freedom to be experimental and to sort of play around with shorter fiction. So um, I, I see a lot of freedom in it, but I was just curious to know what you find to be some of the, the, the most fun or freeing aspects uh, or joys of writing short fiction. Um, you know, I think it's a great question because um, it, it's part of why I love short fiction. I, I, I love what you're saying just about, you know, the freedom and, and, you know, sometimes I'm like, I want to write about my shoes, whatever. And I don't want to write a novel about them. You know, I, I think when we write novels, a lot of times we feel this pressure to like, we've got to find a story that has all this, all this meat on it. Right. And with short fiction, I feel like I can write about anything. So I feel like it's very freeing that way. Mm -hmm. And I teach short story writing and I, I see students who, who do this and I, they, you know, some of the things students do is fantastic because they're just like, what a random thing to write about. And yet the short story allows you to really, um, I, I, I think it allows you this sort of entree into the entire world. And then, like you say, sometimes, let's say I'm writing about my shoes. Sometimes you go into writing about your shoes and it it branches off into all the universal themes. So a lot of times a short story uh, effort will will take you somewhere you didn't think you were going to go and and maybe much bigger than your idea for that novel. So I, I think that they're they're sort of, uh, they're, they're tricky that way. They really are precious little gems and they should be taken you know seriously and paid attention to yeah absolutely um just know, have you ever uh, started something that was a short story and it turned into a novel um or thought you were writing yeah. a novel and it turned into yeah. yeah 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 i've done i've done both of those yeah it's like uh -huh. this be a short. i think there's a, a process where while you're writing you get a sense of this should be a poem this should be a short story this should be a novel this should be a screenplay it sort of tells you at some point so yeah mm -hmm. all of that has happened yeah, yeah. I think sometimes it tells you and then sometimes you discover along the way or something's yeah, not yeah, working, yeah, or working you out. It, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I, I love that. And uh, I, I, um, I'm curious to know, what are, you, what are the biggest challenges in terms of uh, teaching short fiction? What are some of the common issues you, you see with students um, uh, or, or um, common, maybe common suggestions you often make or find yourself making the most? Yeah, I mean, I think I think students often fall into this sort of um, autobiographical memoir thing that they, they want to write about themselves, and they have a hard time writing fiction at all. And so, so I talk a lot about character and about like, you know, you can talk about a certain part of your character, you can make up a character, there's a certain aspect of you, or pick somebody really different from you and write a story based on them. So I, I think a lot of times they it's made me really appreciate how a short story kind of requires and does best when it has an interesting character with an interesting dilemma. So it's the same character conflict of all fiction, but it has an intensity to it. And I think more of a, um, a real distinctness to it, you know, pick somebody with a, with a, with a slightly off character with a, with a, with a kind of strange problem. Mm -hmm. So that often I find is helpful to students, you know, and a lot of it is just to break them out of their normal kind of mode of thinking and writing, which I think when they start out a lot of times is autobiographical, which is fine. We we all have to start that way, I think. But um, the challenge is often to get them to move off of that. And that really frees them to do all sorts of things. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think one of the things I, I just want to say, one of the things that I see a lot is students taking a lot of shortcuts with dialogue, whether it's short fiction, because I, I you know, always thought, uh, you know, that with short fiction, I would see less of that with longer works, perhaps where students just write all dialogue to rush the yeah. story along. And it's almost like yeah. a, a screenplay um, yeah. with unimportant, non-essential dialogue. So I see yeah. myself making that that comment a lot. Yeah. 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 So, um, and so what are the biggest challenges that you have found when you write short fiction uh, compared to say when writing longer works and novels? What are the, the hardest parts uh, for you? Well, you know, like I kind of like to go off on tangents and have subplots and things in, in, in a novel. And you really don't have that in a short story. I mean, you can do it, but it's it's not a good idea. You want to stick to the story. So that that's also, I mean, as much as that's a challenge, I also find that really, really a great thing. It's a great reminder of like stick to the story and how 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 economic, you know, like economy of language, how much can you get the how short can you make this and tell the story you want to tell? So I think sometimes the the shortness of the form feels limiting and a challenge at first. And then I think it feels very liberating. It's almost like you're on a stage. Having limits really helps you bring out a story in a way that not having limits can get you sort of lost. So I think the challenges end up sort of its gifts. So if so, be willing to face those challenges. And I think you'll find that they transform into actually an advantage or a good aspect of, of the writing process. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I really love that. Um, I think that's great. Um, I, I also think, you know, sometimes uh, there's a, there's just so many similarities between poetry and short fiction, right? When we talk about yeah. uh, some of the approaches or some of the differences, I think that, and length is part of it, but I also think there are other elements. So I think uh, there, there's some commonalities between approaching short fiction uh, in terms of economy of language and things like that. Um, so when do you know if it's complete? When do you know that a story is complete? Because, you know, sometimes I teach uh, short fiction um, stories, you know, very acclaimed stories. And my students often say, if that's a story, you know, like a Sandra Cisneros vignette, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and so when do you know for yourself when a story is complete? I mean, how, how can one tell? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And, and it's interesting what you said about poetry, too, because I started out in poetry and I always wrote narrative poetry. They were little stories, right? Written in a poetic form. So I felt like this was kind of a natural way to communicate. And, you know, that idea of a beginning, middle and end, I think is important. Um, and you, I think you, you, you have a sense of that because of the shortness of the form. And so the, the ending seems to be very important to me in a short story. So a lot of times I don't know, you know, until I feel like I get the right ending, I don't feel I'm done. And sometimes I have to put it aside and, I have to go back and I have to rewrite the end many times. And so there's a point at which it just clicks uh -huh. because, you know, if you've set up the story and you've set up the conflict and the character and everything's happening, it's going to go to a certain place. And then you want it to be an interesting place, not just an ending for, for what happened, but a sort of insight or, or even maybe a pivot into something else. But, but getting that ending right seems to be the thing. And it does come, but a lot of times the story has to be put down and walked away from. Yes. And come back to in a week or two or something. And the ending usually comes with time. I have to digest the story. Yeah. Yeah. I also think, too, you know, with any art, if it works, it works. Right. It's just that thing. And I think we, we know right. Sometimes right? it works the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, th I think we know in our heart when, when we put the work in or when something's working or again, when we're taking shortcuts or it's not fully there, we haven't done what we need to do as a writer to make it truly successful. I think sometimes knowing that and being able to admit that when, you know, this isn't complete yet or finished is, is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. Um, and again, I just think it's one of the things that, you, that, that we do know it instinctually. Um, as I know, I've been in denial before about works that I thought were finished and they weren't. Um, so I'm also curious to know about perhaps um, some qualities uh, that you um, find in um, in successful short stories or, you know, is, is there a recipe? Is there something or, you know, are there, there are certain elements all short stories should have or need to have? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's that idea of conciseness or succinctness or economy, right? That that's important, I think. Um, and the beginning, middle end, those would be the most basics, I guess. Um, and then, you know, I go back to this idea of like a character with an interest, an interesting character with, with a, with a strange dilemma. I mean, I just read a story by Otessa uh, Moshveg. I'm, I'm teaching mm -hmm. a class actually on dialogue. Funny you mentioned that as well. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so many things coming together, but um, 
she writes these stories about these people. She just sort of throws them into a situation. And, you know, it's like, oh, some guy who grew up in Utah and suddenly he's in L.A. and he's decided he's going to become an actor. You know, it's sort of like, oh, how's this going to play out? And he's sort of this naif, you know. And so I think I think just taking a character, sometimes if you have an interesting character in mind and just throwing them into any situation, you know, maybe there's somebody who lives in New York City and you just say, I'm just going to put them in Nome, Alaska and see what happens to them. Um, a lot of times I find that's a, a creative way of getting a story going, but I, but I think I'm getting a little off the point here. So what are the mm. qualities that are, make a successful story? I mean, yeah, I think that uniqueness is important, which is why I bring that up. Um, yeah, I'll just ask you this, Trevor. Is it possible that that there are, I mean, there may be certain elements in terms of the conciseness or uh, purpose, but maybe not, right? In terms of, you know, I guess novels also have a, you know, have some of the same limitations depending on the length of the novel. So, I mean, is it possible that some of the challenges or some of the, uh, even the the recipes for success um, are are similar to longer fiction? Yeah, although mm -hmm. I think you have more of an opportunity to experiment in the short story. You uh -huh. know, you have, like, you're not as invested in it, like, I've got to make this novel work. A short story, you can completely screw it up, you know? So yes. I like the idea that it's almost like, you know, it's one day, it's not the entire year, whereas yes. a novel has that weight where you're like, don't screw up your life, you know, you, you've got to do this right. Whereas a short story, it's like, I can completely mangle this day, and I'm the same person tomorrow, and I can go on with my life. So I think there's a real freedom to that experimentation aspect of short fiction. You can really set yourself loose to do anything and just try it. It's like throwing something against the wall. If it doesn't work, you don't lose that much. You know, you're not invested in the way yes. you are for the longer piece. Absolutely. No, I love that. Yeah, you can really play with it, right? And I think yeah, it's and also things come out of that, you know? Sure. You can it's a great way, I think, to find one's writing voice as well. Right. Mm -hmm. You can tinker with that. As you said, it's you know, you're not spending a whole year or you're not committing to like 500 pages. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And I, I think too too with all writing, it's it's possible um, you know, that no matter, um, you know, what elements make most short stories successful, there can be exceptions to that. You know, that's the, the great yeah. thing about art. Somebody's going to come along and break the rules and yeah. it's like, oh yeah, except for that and except for that. So, it, um, <laughs> right. So um, also in terms of your own short fiction, uh, which of your own uh, works do you find, to, are you most proud of, or do you feel like this works best? Like if you had to show someone one of your um stories and said this is me as a writer what would that be yeah that's a good question um i've written sh three collections of short stories so i have a lot of them and um you know i i think in this last collection I did called falling there's a couple stories in there i really like and i think it's because i was trying to understand a large thing inside a story with one or two characters, even though it's a vast thing. So for instance, I lived in Argentina a year and I wanted to write about all the experience I had there and all the things I learned and just like what a huge concept, like a whole nother nation is, right? And mm -hmm. I'm only there a year and who am I to talk about it? But it's like, but what was my experience? How would I distill it? And so I wrote a story called Geography of Plants and it had to do with the history of the country. It had to do with individuals I'd met and, and to find a little format to get all that playing with each other and be able to pull it off successfully. I felt really good about that story. And another one was when my father passed away, I did this story called Rites of Passage, which is in the same collection. And the idea was like, I need to sum up my relationship with my father in a short story. And I don't want to write a novel. I don't want to write a memoir. And so it was that same challenge. And I was able to, to do it in that story. And you know, that that's the wonder of short stories. It's like, wow, you can really say a lot in a short story. And I almost mm -hmm. feel like I can say more in a short story now than I can in an entire novel. So yeah, I, I'm really into short stories now. Yeah, yeah. And I can't just make the connection between, you know, uh, short short fiction and poetry. I think, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I would say to my students, it's like, yeah, it, it you know, it should make you feel something or should make you think something or realize something. Or if yeah. nothing else, it should sound, you know, uh, rhythmic or there should be a musicality to it. Right. So mm -hmm. the sound mm -hmm. of it, the feeling or the the, the thinking involved. It, yeah. Um, yeah, it's an experience. It's sort of an intense experience. Most people read a short story in one sitting. So it's a different experience than some of our other reading and in poetry the same way it's like it's be here now present moment yeah absolutely absolutely um so i'm curious you mentioned um uh, i already mentioned one uh, short story writer what was the name of the writer you said that uses a lot of dialogue um uh, uh i don't i think i mentioned the class dialogue i don't think i mentioned oh, the, the class writer. sorry yeah a lot of dialogue but 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 interestingly enough there's a bunch of writers in there with dialogue and like oh, okay. Mary Hill, for instance i love her short fiction uh -huh. She uses dialogue in a really 
really well thought out way. Every line counts. And, you know, teaching dialogue is one of those things, like you were saying, you know, a lot of useless dialogue, ugh, you know, it's like teaching people, it's like, it's not the way we speak. Totally. You know? Yes. If this was a, you know, if there was a transcript of this interview, it'd be like, oh, please cut totally. all of these lines. Right. Right. Absolutely. No, it's so true. When, um, yeah, I always tell students, it's not like, good morning. How are you? Fine. How are you? Right. But they insist on putting right. that in. It's like, it's not really yes. in, in fiction. It's the essence of a conversation, yes. the essence of it, not actually literally the conversation because right. real like conversations and are like every very boring. Has to count. Every spoken piece of dialogue has to count. It can't be these throwaway. We don't need totally. them. Totally. It can just or be summarized. Report. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, who are some other, uh, short fiction writers that, that, that you admire, like, um, yeah so gosh i love short fiction so i mean i started making a list because i thought oh gosh you know i'm gonna forget somebody and so i thought so, some of some of the the writers that that i teach um when i'm teaching short fiction and are actually people who've been to saints and sinners too like michelle t uh -huh. and Holleran. i think mm -hmm. these people are are great short story writers and especially in that sense of they'll they'll sketch out a character and it's just a really focused um concentration on this character and something happens to them but but bringing out a character in a short story like that and really sort of this little vignette of 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 kind of giving us a sense of who is this person and what are their motivations is really great and andrew holleran does that really great and what was that book that in september the light changes i think it's called uh -huh. he does that really well in that book and then michelle t's like valencia is great yes like, oh that's a fantastic oh i love that yeah yeah she's driving it's like ah oh, it's perfect right she's wonderful yeah yeah and, i completely agree yeah and i also like uh, edmund white and tom cardamon who i think have both been to the fair as well i love their short fiction i mean tom is fantastic because he's so imaginative and i i i, I love reading him to get that sense of okay let's let's just i'm looking for a different idea and i mean he's always just off somewhere picking up ideas and bringing them back and telling these stories so so i love tom and that makes me also think of angela carter love angela carter's mm -hmm. working of fairy tales and i also think that's a great way for somebody who wants to write short fiction to approach it it's like hey take a story you know like a fairy tale like she does and she basically rewrites fairy tales in a sort of modern feminist sense and it's a really fun exercise to do and i've had a lot of success with students doing that um roberto bolaño writes mm -hmm. really oh yeah fiction um let's see camilla grudova a canadian mm -hmm. woman fantastic uh really weird kind of borgesian type stuff louise erdrick writes really uh -huh. she writes a lot of novels but her short stories are tight and yes i think hers are really good um baldwin of course you know, oh yeah yeah sunny's blues like is so so fantastic i yeah. still think that's at the top of my list uh after all these years yeah, yeah. so i mean it, it goes on and on and i mean i don't know I, I i could go on and on but um those are just a few examples fantastic um, no, that's but, a great uh, list that's a, a i great think it's list. a great way also when i find out about a new writer maybe they're a novelist I, a lot of times i go to their short story collection i want to know what they can do and what different things they do besides just that main course of the novel that everyone's reading or whatever so a wonderful way to get to know a writer i find it's sure yeah just in terms of time commitment too or commitment yeah. in yeah, general you're not you know sure you're gonna like it maybe yes yeah. yeah maybe you don't have time to read the whole novel but it's a great entry yeah. point yeah um yeah excellent trevor so um as we wrap up which have uh, one more question um and uh perhaps you know this is the most important uh one for those who might be uh considering submitting to this year's uh short fiction contest uh what is a final piece of advice or any uh, final piece of advice to um uh, uh regarding short fiction in general or to someone who perhaps is afraid or or you know nervous about submitting to a contest like this yeah you know, it's it's funny with with time. It's like I have less and less advice. <laughs> mm -hmm, sure. And and I think I think my my advice really to all writers these days, my students and everyone else is, just read, mm. and read what you want to write. If you want to write short stories, read short stories. There's a there's a process of osmosis. You know that you really start to get a sense of how they work and how you can do it. So I just encourage people to read lots of short fiction. And so anybody entering the contest, it's like. Go out and find some short fiction. Read read five short stories by five different people this week, you know, and see what that does. And I think that it helps people get it, get a sense of the form. Um, and maybe some of the people I just mentioned, whatever. Sure. Um, yeah, it's a great list. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. But I really feel like good reading makes good writing. So I always encourage my students, don't just read crap or or what you necessarily, you know, enjoy as a sort of escape or whatever. Like, what do you want to do? Read things like that, like that 
are trying to do what you're trying to do and and be ambitious you know pick canonical writers you think oh my god i could never do that it's like well you know you'd be surprised read them yeah. and uh, you know i guarantee you you can start to you can start to write at that level it's it's definitely doable totally yeah and also too because you know once one finds their voice you know and makes their way uh down the writing path their writing won't be hopefully exactly like the other person's right it'll be their own anyway so um yeah, yeah. You know, one thing i wanted to say was i work with um central american refugees um and there's a lot of gay and lesbian trans kids and so this idea of give out day during pride, especially we should support the gay and lesbian organizations that we think are helpful. So like, you know, Saints and Sinners is an awesome one because it supports gay writers and you know, it's growing and it's been so important. Like you and I have been going for years and the fact that it's actually growing and sort of, it's really wonderful to see that right now, especially I feel like, wow, it's really taking off. And so it's a good thing to support and they need resources. So I just wanted to encourage people to think about that or whatever their favorite LGBT um q um you know charity or thing is like my refugee work whatever you know this is a good time to support it and really think about it or maybe choose a new one if you're looking for something right sure absolutely yeah i think it was saints and centers like uh you know uh, many writing careers can be traced through that festival you know because i think many of yeah. us go at various yeah. phases of our career and it's it's, it's just a beautiful yeah. thing there's a lot of history there yeah. a lot of literary history i always say that i've said to uh, paul willis the director of the festival before that I think, you know, in, you know, uh, future decades, when people look back at, you know, uh, you know, queer literary history, Saints and Sinners will play a huge role, I think, in terms yeah. of, you know, what was happening uh, during this time. So and, I think it's, it's very so important. Supportive. I always get inspired. You know, even if I go and I don't have a book out or whatever, I go, oh, why am I going, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, I'm there in this community. Everybody's talking. They're sharing. You get so inspired. I always start writing. You know, I mean, it's it's an incredible little crucible of creativity just to be there. It's the sort of just show up thing. You'd be amazed what comes out of it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I've had some of those same some same reservations in certain years. I'm like, oh, should I go this year or not? Every time yeah. I go, it's really rewarding and I get inspired. Um, so Trevor, thank you so much for, for uh, answering my questions. And uh, well, I, this has been a fun conversation. We yeah, can walk for hours. <laughs> yeah. I hope to see you next time I'm in LA. So uh, yes, very uh, good. Beautiful. I'll Have certainly a... see you at Saints and Sinners in the coming March, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds Thanks. great. See you then. Okay. Thanks. All right. Hey, Trevor. Thank you. Take care. Bye.